Yo, yo, what's up? This is Jay Hamilton, Sonic Boom Bap, touching down with you guys. Um, this one I'm going to do on Logic Pro X. I was on the B community today on Facebook. It's a cool page. You know, a lot of beat makers are on there. And it's, I saw this guy, he posted a question about, you know, what dog, da da um, I forget the whole thing. It was something about Logic Pro and Cubase, but... Um, he had a pro he had an issue with Logic Pro X as far as you know he's I guess he's working on a song he had some uh, he had a hook in the song and what he wanted to do is copy and paste the hook you know instead of you just having the singer or vocalist or MC or whoever just say it again you can just copy and paste it so I was wondering why he was having issues because he said you know if he copies and he tries to paste it it won't paste down uh, you know in the right spot. And I was thinking, like, wait a minute, you know. First, I was like, you know, you you know, you go in there, you just cut the regions and copy and paste it. But uh, something told me to ask him was his uh, music uh, BPM set up inside of Logic. So, you know, you have to set the BPMs of anything that you're working. You don't have to, but if you're trying to do some editing or, you know, it could be with effects or anything. You want to make sure that your music that you're working on matches the BPM. You know, make sure Logic matches the BPM of your music. And if you, it doesn't matter if you're working with an NPC or a machine or whatever. Whatever you did the beat in, if whatever that BPM you use, you make sure when you move your music over to Logic or however you put it in there, you can, you know, load it up inside of it or record it. Make sure that you uh, have the BPM set to whatever the music the BPMs that you know the BPM and logic set to the same BPMs as the music that you record or that you about to mix or whatever this beat that I pulled up here well actually it's a song is at 95 uh, beats per minute um, so it was easy for me to pretty much uh, move the hooks around so this is a hook right here um, okay, cool. So, you know, that's the hook. Uh, this, is, this song, by the way, is from uh, Treehouse Flavor. Uh, these guys, they, uh, they've been doing uh, hip, uh, you know, hip hop music for years. They decided to do a children's album. So this is one of the songs on the children's album. It was not really meant for, I mean, you can, adults can rock it too. It's it just to bring that real hip hop to the, you know, the children. So but anyway, I'm using this as an example. So that's the hook right here. So if I highlight this, you know, if I, so what I'll do is, you know, obviously uh, it didn't look like this when I first started working on it. But if you take a look, um, what I did was I just took his, you know, the performance of the hook once I had it down then I just cut everything that I wanted out of it you know and then what I do is I copy this so you know command uh, command C and you want to make sure that everything lines up so make sure so I don't know let's see if I can put this hook somewhere else my choice I don't control it all right, so maybe. Uh, all right, so let's put the hook right here. It's going to come in a little sooner, but hey. So, all right, I made a copy of that. So, let's see how it sounds. So, you can always copy and paste the hook uh, as long as the BPM. It's set in logic right, the right BPM you made, the beat, the whole, you know, what you did in your MPC or whatever you could have made. You know, you just got to make sure if you want to do that type of editing where it's just effortlessly copying and pasting, then that's what you want to do. Now, the guy that I was talking to on Facebook, he didn't have his song set to the BPM. 
And, you know, that can be an issue. You know, it's like, uh, and I, I work with a lot of other artists. You know, I have guys that want to record with me. They come over with a beat. They want to lay their verse, but they don't have the BPM. They don't know what the BPM is. I don't know what the BPM is. So I have to figure it out sometimes. And, and sometimes I may be on point, and other times I'm not. So I'm going to give you this tip. Um, first tip, if you don't know what the BPM is and you got the beat loaded in the DAW, so what you want to do, you can go to this uh, your master, uh, master channel here, your master bus here. What you want to do is pull up the BPM counter. This right here, if you play the beat, in that, it'll tell you what the BPMs is. You know, you can, actually, I can play it now, and it'll tell me. Hopefully, it'll be the same as the BPM in Logic, but, you know, you can play it. See? So, it's, it's matching. So, it went up to dot one, but it's actually 95 BPM. So, it went back to 95.0. So, yeah, that's it. You know, it's going to jump around a little bit, but usually, you'll get to where you got to go. So you can use that if you don't know the BPMs. And it's best to do it when you got a beat going because it's got the kick and snare. And if as long as it's syncopated, this BPM uh, little plug-in inside of Logic will make it easy, man, make your life easy. So you can do that. Um, let's see. So, yeah, you find that in uh, uh, metering. So you go to metering, and then there's the BPM counter. So you can find out the BPM of a song if you don't know it that way. Now, another way you can do it is all kinds of weird ways you can find the BPMs. So, you know, you can do the tap tempo. Like, sometimes I'll do that, or sometimes I will, uh, you know, just adjust the BPMs and have a metronome going so it sounds right. I don't know. It's, it's so many different ways. That's one of the easy ways. I'm not going to go through all the methods. Now, say that you don't know the BPM at all and you want you got the song, you're like, man, I don't care about the, you know, figuring out the BPMs. I just want to work and I'll figure out all this later. So now this is another thing that, you know, sometimes you're gonna have, you know, you do your whole song, but it's not set up in the right BPMs and logic. Um, you like, man, I still want this hook to sound right on, you know, right after the second hook. So this is a little harder, you know, but it's uh it it can def definitely get you there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to ticks here in the in the snap grid. You know, this is Logic Snap Grid right here, Logic Pro X. I went to ticks because, you know, smart it has pretty much put you on the bar or somewhere close, you know, it, it definitely tries to get you close to the bar. This one right here will get you right on the bar, so you will even if you click anywhere, it'll put you in the right spot. But I'm gonna use ticks because what I want to do is this hook that I just copied. I want to move it around a little bit, you know, just so it'll be off. So I'm gonna move it slightly to the left here. So, bam. All right, so I moved it. All right, so man, you like, dude, it's it's off. So if you play it, let's go back and we're gonna play it. You're gonna see that it's off. I just moved it off a little bit. Okay, so it's off. So man, you like man, you can uh, you can move it with the mouse and do it that way. But you know sometimes with doing it with the mouse, it's it doesn't it's not as accurate. So what I use is a tool inside of Logic called the Event Float. And how I get to it, you can do keystrokes to get to it. But I'm gonna show you how to get to it in Logic Pro X. You go here to Window, you scroll down. You go to show event float, that's what you want, and it's going to pull up this. Now, this is what I usually do. All right, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Let me see if I can. All right, so let's, let's zoom in a little bit here. All right, so you can tell that this is off a little bit here. Let's All right, so. All right, so this event float, what it does is, man. So, right here, if you look here, 65 is probably where the bar is. I want this to land on. This has got to be right here at 65. 
So um, say if you don't know the BPM, so you like, man, I'm just fishing in the dark. So it's all, awesome. you know, it's like. So what you can do is go in here in the event float. You can start moving this around a little bit. You see what it's doing? It's itching it around. So you can play around. So you know you're getting close. So you can just play around till you get it right, you know. So, you know, I'm just giving you an example. This hook was already placed in here great, but this is just to help you guys who don't have hooks sitting in there right, and you want to move it in there and fit it the way. So you can do it with the event viewer here. You can move it back and forth, you know, and put it in the right place if you want. It's up to you. Um, you can use the event viewer, uh, viewer, I mean event float. I use this all the time if stuff is off then I can put the hook in the right place. And since it's not, if your, if your song is not hooked up to the right tempo, just disregard this grid here and everything's gridded up. Just think, pretend this thing is just totally off and you're just gonna have to use your ear in this event float to really get the hook to sit in there to the point where it sounds right. And that's really what you're going for. You, your goal is to get it to sound right to you. And that's what the event float will do. You, it'll let you find, adjust the, the regions here until you get it sitting where you want it to sit. I'm just using this song. Everything is already lined up in the BPM of this song, but I'm just talking about a song where you don't have a BPM at all. So you use this event float. Now, another way you can do it, you know, like I said, I was telling the guy on Facebook, you can, you know, like you, you, you know, like I said, you can snap the grid, move it to ticks, and you can use the mouse and you can fine tune it around. You know, you can move it this way, that way, and it, it lets you freely move it until you want to put it in the right place. So you can do it that way. Or you can get even more wicked with it with the samples, but ticks is probably what you want to use. So there you have it, man. So those two things right there, you can either try the event float, you can use that to move things around, or you can actually use your mouse set the snap the grid the ticks and then move it around that way until you hear it you know you got to constantly play it back so you can hear what it sounds like but that that's a way that you can adjust things and logic a little more freer move things around and you don't have to even if you don't know the bpms you're not limited you can still use logic because i do this all the time I've, I've had songs guys come in here no BPM, they don't know nothing. All they got is they, they, they verses, and they just ready to go lay it down. So this should help you guys who don't have any, you know, don't have, you know, a lot of knowledge with logic. But, you know, even if you do, it may be something that you just didn't get to. So you, just, you should check this out, and I hope it helps you guys. And make sure that you subscribe to Sonic Boom Bap, the channel on YouTube, and also check out sonicboombap.com. Got cool gear reviews. Uh, interviews, uh, talking about whatever gear is coming out, you know, tips, tricks, all that. So definitely go to Sonic Boom Bap. And you can subscribe to my mailing list also. And if you do, you'll get a free drum kit. So definitely it's just drums that I threw together, um, put my own signatures, touch to them. So I gave you some cool sounds in there. It's not a lot, but it's definitely some of my good stuff, you know. And uh, and it's very useful. So you can definitely use those drums and get busy. I made sure that those snares popping.